And welcome back to Calgary as we get set for the Flames and the Dallas Stars. First of all, a reminder to play Safeway's million dollar score and win if any Flames player scores five times in tonight's game. John Stuber of Medicine Hat could win one million dollars. Shop and swipe at Safeway. You could be our next lucky winner right here on Sportsnet. So the Flames meet the Stars for the second time. The Stars 5 1 winners in Dallas a while back. We'll see how it goes tonight with the call. Here's Rob and Charlie. Well, the Calgary Flames get set for the Dallas Stars. Flames losing overtime 3 2 to San Jose on Tuesday night. Let's take a look at the starting goalies brought to you by Intact Insurance, your home, your auto, your business. Ask your broker about Intact Insurance Company. Kari Lettinen goes again for Dallas, fresh off a 3-0 blanking of the Oilers last night, 23rd shutout of his career. Reto Berra was singled out by his teammates for getting them a point versus San Jose on Tuesday. The Flames really rallying around this guy as he starts for the fifth time in the last six games. As you take a look at the Flames bench and Mike Camilleri, who's got a lot of attention in the last couple of days for his heart. Hot start, Coach Bob Hartley is talking about his ability to find open spaces, his ability to get that puck away quickly, his quick release. Another big part of his game is just his preparation and being ready for the start of every game. And we are ready for the start of this game. Now, will the Calgary Flames be ready? They were challenged by their coach this morning. He said, either show up at 7.08 ready to play or give me three third periods. As third periods have certainly been what the Flames have been good at recently in terms of trying to battle back, but want to avoid digging that early hole. DJ Galliardi, and that one goes off of Robidaw, and a little pushing and shoving with the Flames forward and the star defenseman. Keys to the game are brought to you by Budweiser. Great games are waiting. For the Calgary Flames, we'll have a little sermon here. They want to have a, a beginning, a middle, and the end. Exactly what you just talked about complete game if they're going to get themselves back on track and it all has to start here hey at the beginning right now why not Bob Hartley looking on as Joe Colburn coming out he's going to center Mike Camilleri and Lee Stepniak this evening Dallas winning in Edmonton last night pretty much a one nothing hockey game two empty netters salting it away for the Stars that was a very good road team of late. They've won five of their last six on the road. After coming out of the gates, 1-4-0. and oh, So, yes, they've turned it around. And I think a lot of it has to do with, with the, the chemistry they do have on the bench. And plus bringing the new general manager, Jimmy Neal, and, of course, the new head coach, Lindy Ruff. So there's systems to be learned. Goligoski back to get it for the Stars. Takes a bump there. Flames come up with a puck. Colburn, though, can't control it. And Chris Russell hustles back into his own end to pick it up. Good hit at the end of that shift by Lee Stepniak making his presence felt on Kuligoski, who would uh, not be in the lineup that first game in Dallas. Kari Lettinen, a little trouble momentarily, and then he fires it back out to center. Sean Monahan crosses the line into the glove of Lettinen, and he will hang on. And let's continue with the keys and take a look at Dallas. The way Dallas has been playing, we talked about the success on the road, and there's one reason for it. They utilize their speed. They're a very quick team this year. Lindy Ruff has the guys really an up-tempo, up-ice kind of game, and a big part of that is their skating ability. Michael Backlund, McGratton, and Jackman out there for Calgary. Tim Jackman celebrating his 32nd birthday by playing in his 400th career NHL game. Or you could call it a pension game as it shot down the ice. Weidman back to touch it. Tim Jackman hitting that magical 400 game mark, which as a professional hockey player is important. Well, it, it was it was at the, at the point when it first brought out there used to be a little bit of an extra little a bit of money put into the uh, pension when you reach that 400 games because of your durability and being able to play. It's since then has it's kind of evaporated as, as far as that. The pension still is good and they get contributed every year, but uh, that's still a big number for a player, especially the system and the style that a Tim Jackman plays. Very physical, in-your-face kind of game. Talking about how excited he is still to come to the rink even now. 32, still gets butterflies. Gonchar cross ice. Dumped in by Roussel and come around the boards back to the point. Gonchar 
As Garbutt turns around, and Reto Berra touches it by knocking it into the corner. Back up top. Shot Jordy Ben blocked by Michael Backlund. Unconventional, but effective. As this opportunity for Dallas around the perimeter back to the point, but not in the middle of the ice. As Calgary's taken that away. Now Ladislav Schmid. He blocked a shot. He is down. He's the last man back. Sagan shot is over top of the net. Tyler Sagan comes back. Daly stopped by Reto Berra. And Ladislav Schmid unable to get off the ice. He's trapped out there. Trying to knock it away from Sagan. Now the Flames give it away in their own end. Hops out in front and Nichushkin just missed the net. And then he crushes Brian McGratton. Big hit for the 18-year-old rookie. The veteran didn't like it. And again, Calgary unable to get it out. The fourth line trapped in their own end. Now Schmid has some room. Better just to slow it down like Schmid did there. Get control of the puck. The Flames will be getting part of a line change, a partial. Barrett got a piece of that, and it rockets up into the mesh. Well, not only was it a shot uh, from the point, also he gets a knee from uh, Roussel as he's coming out of the corner. Right there, he gets bumped, and he gets the, the shot and the knee. To that point, stays down for a split second, but as Bob Hartley says, he's a warrior. And he's right back up and finished the shift. A lot of praise for Ladislav Schmidt's first game Tuesday against the Sharks. As Hartley said, came as advertised. Blocking shots, making hits, getting physically involved. Rich Peverly to take the draw against TJ Galliardi and Galliardi had it momentarily, trying to work it away from Vern Fiddler. A grab by Stajan, out to center. Here's David Jones bouncing it off a couple of bodies. Dylan has it. Brody over to Matt Stajan. Long shot, a blocker away. Letting him the club on that. Fiddler along the boards. There's Sean Horkoff. Long-time member of the Edmonton Oilers has the puck taken away. Flames with it. Jones along the boards. Back into the corner. Galliardi trying to get position on Robida. Here we are four minutes into this game, and already Robida and Galliardi have a little thing going. Started on the first shift. It continues on this one. Now Chris Butler. Eight block shots against San Jose. A season high for Butler. As he's fifth in the National Hockey League in that category coming into action tonight. Played off the glass. Weidman has a dribble by him. Russell covering up. The Flames get it back out to center. So far, shots 2-0 in favor of Dallas. Going back to that storyline of slow starts for the Flames. I'm not sure this is what Bob Hartley was hoping for. Stepniak shot. That one dribbles through the catching glove of Lettinen and Wide. It's a great scoring opportunity uh, created by Lee Stepniak on his off wing. Lots of speed. Now Jordy Ben, the older of the two Ben brothers, playing defense, forced back. Camilleri watches Gonchar. Alex Chason can't get it by Camilleri. Gonchar will go far side. And back onto the stick of Chason. Into Calgary territory. Shot wide of the net. Galliardi waiting for it along the boards. He had to stage him, but it's too far for him. And Trevor Daly out to center. And you talked about speed of Dallas. Not only when you normally think of speed, you think in a straight line and going in the offense. Their speed also is very important on the back check. Here they come. Roussel leading the rush. Morin trying to play it back to Garbett. Intercepted by Shane O'Brien. Back in the lineup after sitting out Tuesday's game against the Sharks. As that one shot into the Dallas bench. Charlie, safe to say, last couple of games, four games or so, the Calgary Flames have dug themselves a hole in the first period. And for them, it's very difficult to, to dig it yourself out of that a deep of a hole. The opponents have outscored them 6-1 to one in the last four games in the first period. But more importantly, the shots against. They, you really are putting yourself back into, into a shell, almost to the point where now you're focusing so much on defense, you can't get yourself involved offensively in the game. And uh, right now, even though they haven't had a lot of opportunities, they still haven't given up any goals. So that's... That's part of the battle uh, going Bob Hartley's way. Early goals also a problem. 92 seconds in on Tuesday. They were down 1-0 to the Sharks. As Hoodler turns around looking for Monaghan. Berchi picks it up. Sven Berchi back to Yuri Hoodler. Drags it back. Trying to go to the point. Goes off a stick and a race for it. Russell 
with all kinds of room on Nachushkin. Here's Berchi. Off the boards, picked up by Monahan. On Monahan, pocket pick. Nice play by the captain, Ben, and he'll start it up the other way. To your point about their speed, even back checking. Shot stopped by Barra. Knocked back into him by his own players. It comes up top. Robinaz scores! Dallas up 1 0. There's that defensive skating ability of the Dallas Stars as they, they were able to come on the back check. Jamie Ben does a good job here, picks the pocket, sets up a three on two at this point. They come up the ice very casual, and just good heads up shot. Tremendous save right there. Recover on the rebound, but nobody can get control of it. And just not enough time for everybody to regroup as it goes back to Robida. And Ben is standing in front, all 6'2", 210 pounds of him, sets up a big screen along with Weidman. Dallas have the lead. If it is Robida's goal, it's his second of the season. It comes 6.27 into the first period, so yet another early goal against for Calgary. How will they answer back? Stempniak trying to give us the answer to that question as Colborn out there with him. He gives it back to Stempniak. Down low, Joe Colborn. Tight quarters with Stemiak back to the point. Traffic in front, tip there by Camilleri. And Colborn has it for Calgary. Over to Ladislav Schmid. Camilleri trying to get the shot through, goes off a star and bounces out to center. So the goal robot off from Dylan and Jamie Ben, and the Stars have a 1 0 lead. O'Brien up to McGratton. Dallas almost caught with too many men on the ice. Eric Cole has the puck, trying to get around Smeed. Cody Eakin worked over. Puck comes free. Jackman looking for it, trying to get it by Daly, but the presence along the board by Chason keeps it in for Dallas. Oligoski. That one's blocked off as Weidman got in front of it, but Eakin to Cole. Eric Cole hard around the boards. Weidman a little late getting to it as Eakin is there first for Dallas. Right side of the puck, you might say, but now he gives it away in Calgary. Ahead, here's Backlund. Dumps it to the line, knocked out of the air by Goligoski. Chason jumping on it. Looking for Eakin and wasn't quite ready for the pass. Dallas getting a little extra life after that first five minutes of the game, and they've taken advantage of not only on possession in the offensive zone, the shots on that, of course, up but the goal by Robida. Russell waiting for it, fires it towards the net. It's tipped up into the mesh, and whistle goes. Robida opens the scoring as Dallas up by one here in the first. It's Tellus Flames Hockey. Dennis Weidman at the bench being worked on by assistant athletic therapist Shad Richet. His left hand, he's in the shooting lane, and he blocks this shot. You can see his reaction took it right on the hand. As a result, he needed to get the repairs at the bench to continue on in a very important game for Weidman. In fact, this is career game number 600. Nine seasons with five different teams. 65 with the Flames. Offensively, always had those skills. Now starting to play much better behind his blue line. Sleepy start for Calgary here in the first period. Outshot 4-1, down 1-0 to Dallas, who played last night up in Edmonton. As Roussel ahead, Morin across the line, shoots, and Reto Berra hangs on to that. And he knows a little bit about Travis Morin, who, upon his recall from the American Hockey League, recently led the AHL in scoring. Did have a look at him when he played uh, the start of this season in Abbotsford. But aggressive goaltending uh, by Bearer coming outside the paint and utilizing the size and, and covering as much of the net as possible, forcing these players under pressure to make that perfect shot to beat them. Warren to take the draw with Colborn, and the Stars have it. Back to the point, Dylan, and that one's blocked off by Joe Colborn. Weidman back out on the ice. Roger talking about the repairs he underwent during the break. Robodas pass ahead. Camilleri has Garbett dumped on the play. A little slow getting up. He's going to head off. Looks like he might have got shook up. Collision with Camilleri barking at the referee. Not getting a call. He's still barking away. Jones in on it. Colborn with it for Calgary. Falls on the play. Nachushkin is there. But 
Flames still in control of it along the wall. Jones trying to go back to the point. Again, stick on it, deflects out to center. Calgary's tried to go back to the points in this first period, Charlie, but it's being taken away by Dallas. At least four times uh, in this period already. So this was a tricky bouncer, a redirect by Jones, but not being able to get that puck back to the defenseman. And that uh, takes away a lot of the offense. Plus, you have to all regroup in the neutral ice zone and try to get some kind of offensive pressure going against one of the hottest goaltenders in the league right now, Kari Lightning. In conversation with Bob Hartley this morning, and one of the things he mentioned and acknowledged is that they're not taking teams by surprise. Their early start, teams are now a little bit better prepared for what Calgary's bringing them. They're better scouted, those types of things. And obviously Dallas has done their homework. Fiddler across the line, trying to find Horkoff, pass by him, but following up Fiddler. Rich Peverly got the game winner in Edmonton last night. Walks out and Reto Berra had the pad down. Makes the stop. Get an oil change by December 15th and get a free gift. Michelin Hybrid Wiper Blades. Get your coupon at MrLube.com. Charlie, do you get the sense that playing a team in the back half of game, you know, two games and two nights is that big advantage like it, it's made out to be sometimes well I, I think this earlier in the year it's not that big of an advantage plus the style of the game that played the night before and, and the travel arrangements so it really wasn't a, a very physical game as we get one up into the stands last night so it should be all right for Dallas stars up by one tell us flames hockey CIS University football is down to the final four on Saturday it's a sports net U doubleheader Beginning with the UTEC Bowl as Laval takes on Mount Allison. 10.30 a.m. Mountain on Sportsnet 360. Then out here to McMahon Stadium, the Calgary Dinos host the Western Mustangs in the Centaur Mitchell Bowl. 2 p.m. Mountain also on Sportsnet 360. Robodon's second of the season. Dallas with a 1-0 lead on Calgary. Just past the midway point of the first period. Shots are 6-1 in favor of the Stars. Weidman takes it away from Cody Eakin, but... We get it by Chason along the boards. Alex Chason. Knocked down. Puck comes free to Stajan in the corner. Chris Russell up to Galliardi with some room. Over to Weidman who's jumped up into the play. Weidman holds up, takes the hit from Jordy Ben, gets the puck deep. Gonchar nearly coughed it up to Stajan. The veteran defenseman, 39 year old. Played in Ottawa last year. Allows his team to get it out. Back to the hybrid icing line is Butler. This period brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. Andy Ruff has to be very impressed the way his club has responded on this back-to-back -back game. Again, finished before the last TV timeout. Still not a lot of travel for them. Hard shot from Schmid. Just goes wide. O'Brien can't keep it in. This one's fired down the ice. And hustling back is Schmid and another icing call against Dallas. Take a look at Vladislav Schmid, who earlier in the first period blocked a shot. Got... Kind of run into the upper body, the head area, but it looks like he's no worse for wear. Probably just a little bit more relaxed tonight after getting that first game on, under his belt as far as uh, first game after a trade. And, and it is a unique trade because it's only happened once before. Steve Stales being traded down from Edmonton to Calgary. Camilleri with the puck along the wall. Warren takes it away, plays it out. Schmid with it. Steve Stales called Ladislav Schmid after the deal was made and said embrace it enjoy it you're going to love it in Calgary and he gets to play his former team on Saturday here at the Dome Bill Colburn along the boards Garbett in the way he'll bounce it ahead and Roussel in the neutral zone here's Camilleri the hottest flame shot goes the other way to the boards and over top into the crowd one thing the Calgary Flames have seen recently has been very good teams. Going into action tonight, you take a look at the five teams they had played previously. That's a pretty impressive record. You might say fighting in their own weight class or 
right where you can get some points here in the next little while, Charlie. And they have to take advantage of it. Uh, Dallas is uh, playing very well right now. And each one of those five games that they play the night before, the visiting team has already played. So really have to look at the schedule and take advantage of that. Butler's point shot tipped by Jones on the way in. Daly behind the net, his pass to Nachushkin. Can't get it out, bouncing puck, stage and swipes at it. And Goligoski will move it up to Ben. Rolls it, Barra, side of the net. And Brody, trying to get away from Jamie Ben. Previous meeting this season, Ben with two goals against Calgary, picked up an assist, so he's got three points already in four periods against the Flames this season. I think he feels comfortable, uh, especially with new management, new coaching staff, and he's the captain. That uh, This is his team. Shot towards the net. Barra has the puck. He didn't know he had it, but he freezes it and gets the whistle. Faceoff's a big part of the game uh, for the Flames. When they win them, especially in the offensive zone, they're usually pretty successful. They get a scoring opportunity. A little bit of help here for Matt Stajan. There's the redirect before Perry Lightning just was able to re, uh, take that redirection from Jones from the Butler shot from the point. It's becoming a little bit of a constant as well. Chris Butler getting pucks through offensively. As we've got a little bit of a weight conversation going on, Bob Hartley and one of the officials. Now Dylan shot, Barra blocker save hard right out to Hoodler. He played off the glass and out. Now Robida. Rich Peverly. Very systematic right now for Dallas. Here's Horkoff across the line. Now Robodot dancing in from the blue line. Has it side of the net. Barra made the stop. Or Fittler hit the side of the net. It was close. Now Yuri Hoodler looking for Sean Monahan. It's knocked away from the rookie. And Dylan with it. Calgary makes a line change. Peverly across the red line. Hammers it in around the board so Dallas can make a change. O'Brien nearly gave it away to Eric Cole. It comes in front of the net. Barra calmly lays it away from Cody Eakin. Great point by Roger Millions in the opening about how Bear is handling the puck. Much more comfortable and confident with it. And that just takes experience and uh, opportunities during the game. Gonchar at the point. Shot blocked. Michael Backlund, his second block of this first period. Gets it by Cole. Jackman's shot goes off his stick into the mesh and falls back down for a face-off. A little pushing and shoving as Tim Jackman getting involved with Cody Eakin. Too excited. It's his birthday and 400 games. But just not a lot of time and space out there for the uh, Calgary Flames uh, against Dallas. Uh, Dallas very quick on the attack. And there's that good puck handling up by Retobera at that point to get it out of harm's way. And that's where the Flames have been a little bit guilty here in that first period of not making those passes direct and clean. And it may be the point we've been talking about, the skating ability of the Dallas Stars have been getting in the way. Stars out shooting the Flames 9-2 here in the first period. They lead it 1-0. Gonchar up along the boards. Garbutt has it intercepted by Chris Russell. Stepniak after it. Jordy Ben. Muscles it ahead and onto the stick of Travis Morin. And this one bounces in the Calgary end. Weidman, feeling the pressure from Garvin, manages to get it to Russell. Quickly up the boards, Camilleri. Back to Weidman. This one rolled into the Stars' end, side of the net. Oligoski playing it along the boards, takes a funny hop. Camilleri's there. Stepniak shoots. Lettinen with the save. Calgary's best scoring chance of the first period. Goligoski knocking it out of the air with his glove. Gets a little help from Morin, but a bump from Stepniak. Popped the puck free momentarily for Calgary. That's about four or five hits in this period already for Lee Stepniak. Once the Flames get the direct passes, which they did at that point, it forces Dallas into making that perfect play, and then they get themselves some scoring opportunities and shots on net. Berchi across center. Gains the line. Plays it to the board. Spin. Berchi holds up. Coming back to the point. Butler has it. He shoots, and that goes into the corner. Berchi on it with a head of steam. Bounces away from the puck, but over to help out is Hoodler. Berchi again with it. Hoodler back to the point. Butler with some room, looking for a lane. 
side of the net. Hoodler shoots, and Kari Lettinen down to make the stop. Calgary buzzing down by one against the Stars as Yuri Hoodler trying to get that equalizer. Good offensive push by Sven Berchi, Monahan, and Yuri Hoodler as they get that puck to the front of the net into the traffic areas. A spin around on a backhand. Fortunately, not a lot of time and space to get that puck up on the air as Stefan Robida right in the grill of Yuri Hoodler who just happened to lead the Flames with 19 points on the season so far. Good enough for a tie for 14th in the National Hockey League in that category. And that line right back out there for the Flames. Monaghan to take the face off against Peverly. One clean by Rich Peverly. Bounces away from Sean Horkoff down the ice. Barra out to direct traffic. Hard pass looking for Shane O'Brien. Monaghan gains the line. Holds up. Finds O'Brien with the traffic in front. The puck's there, and Hoodler couldn't get his stick free. Shane O'Brien played into a nest of skates, and it laid there momentarily, but Hoodler was all tied up. Three of the Dallas Stars falling back into that lower slot area. Good composure by the young centerman, Monaghan. Once he ended up getting into that offensive zone, just a little bit of a slowdown play that everybody skate by him, and that's where he found O'Brien. John Monaghan leading the Flames in faceoff percentage against the Sharks, 59% against one of the best faceoff teams Tuesday night. As that one's offside. Have a look at this play. Monaghan slowing things down, found O'Brien, and then a big group of players right to the front of the net. You can see that puck just standing there, and it's the uh, most frustrating thing as a player, an offensive player in front of the net. You, you can see it. You know there's an empty net there. You just can't get your stick to it. You know that Kari Lettinen doesn't know where it is. Well, he's happy to, that it didn't. he didn't hear the noise right away where the, uh, from the crowd. Chance now flutters over top of the net into the mesh by Eric Cole as he pulled up on Dennis Weidman but couldn't get the shot on net. Very quick breakout again by Dallas right off the faceoff. One pass, two passes, and they're off to the races. Cole with a good head of steam, just a little bit of a drag. And O'Brien starting the turn. And very quickly, Schmid's able to get that stick back again and chip it up into the mesh. Travis Morton to take the draw against Joe Colborn. I've been jumping in a little bit as he's pushing with Roussel. Draw one by the Stars. Russell. A swat at it, missed it, but gets it up the boards to Camilleri, kept in by Dallas. So Weidman will try on the other side. Hard up, Stepniak deflects it, it bounces straight up in the air. Now it's out. That one took a long time to finally come to fruition. Here's Roussel, two points against Edmonton last night. He goes for the big skate around the net, bounces in, and Barra picks that one out of midair. Charlie, you take a look at that game against San Jose, and, and this is the thing that jumps off at you. Is, it's just the lack of shots the Flames got even at the net. And unfortunately for them, uh, they didn't create their own shots on net, but there were so many other shots that were blocked. You, you look at the 23 block shots and 15 missed shots, so there's an extra 38 attempts at pucks being thrown at Bear that night, and that's just spending way too much time in the defensive zone and not enough time going with the positive things, which is scoring goals and getting down in the offensive zone. Oh, and you saw the faceoff totals back that up as well. You know, San Jose was taking a lot of offensive faceoffs in that game, not having to defend. Stars swing it out. There's the captain, Jamie Benn. He'll hold up, plays it to the middle. Sagan, cross ice, Daly into the middle, looking for Nachushkin, and the 18-year-old had it flutter off the end of his stick. Daly again drops it. Sagan can't get the shot through. Daly down low. Ben being watched by Butler. Feathers it through and Nakushkin had it knocked away. Here's Daly. Hard into the corner and that one shot wide by Sagan as he was trying to hit either Ben or a flame defender in front. Well, Ben uh, stationed himself right to the front of the net, stick on the ice, and lots of good chemistry between Sagan and Jamie Benn early in this season. And Nachushkin, the rookie, not looking out of place on that top line either. 
Just 18 years old, has size, and what's the best part about his game, he has that skating ability to stay involved in the offensive zone. Here's Shane O'Brien trying to walk out, does up high on Lettman, and he'll hang on to that. Faceoff coming up in the Dallas end. A couple of really good offensive chances for Shane O'Brien. Getting the puck offensively, getting the four check going, creates a turnover. Monahan helps out, gets it back to O'Brien, and right here protects the puck very well. Pretty quick feet for the big man walking out of that far corner. Gets it to the forehand very quickly. But with Curry Lightning playing so well right now and no screen in front of him, he's able to anticipate as Brian comes across the front of the net. Don Char plays it over to Peverly. This one deflects out. Chris Russell trying to hold it up on Fiddler. And Fiddler back to the point. Gonchar lines up, makes it all the way through to Barra. And I like Camilleri with it. Patiently playing it ahead. Colburn to the blue line of the Stars, but gives it right back to Gonchar. Colborn knocking it out of the air. He'll bring it in. Pestered on the play by Horkoff. Colborn is Camilleri shot. Rejected. Jordy Ben misses the check from Weidman. Ben still with it. Back to Peverly. Top of the circle. Shoots into the glove of Reto Berra. And he'll hang on to that for a faceoff. Good save there by Reto Berra. Good coverage by the Flames defenseman. But again, spending a lot of time in the offensive zone. That one maybe just going a short side, just outside the post. But again, as a goaltender, you want to make sure you can slow things down and make it to the point where you do not allow Dallas to spend more time working around the offensive zone. Draw one by the Stars. Daly back to the point. Shea Song shoots, and that one doesn't make it through again. A mass of bodies in front of Barra's net. The stage of off the boards, gains the line. His pass knocked away, jumping on it is Goligoski, the one-time Penguin. To the front of the net, looking for Eric Cole. It's by him. And TJ Galliardi out to center. He pops it in. Skips over the stick of Kari Lettinen and back to pick it up is Goligoski. Daly. Hard off the board. Chason has it. Plays it. Cross ice. Ben. Back to the middle. Intercepted. And here comes Berchi. Poked off his stick. Oh, and followed up on the play. Hoodler. And he's knocked down and a collision with Ben. I caught it out of the corner of my eye. Did you see what happened? Both going in opposite directions. The, the puck, uh, Ben Berchi had already lost the puck. And as Ben was turning up ice, Hoodler was turning cross ice right there. And Ben realizing right at the last second, got his hands up and shoulder up to protect himself and it did throw the majority of the weight behind that hit. Now Yuri Hoodler, very unhappy with the lack of a call. He's giving it to Tom Cowell, the referee. What he's saying, it was avoidable, and it definitely was because you could see the motion of Jamie Ben falling through with that shoulder. And if it's by accident, you kind of, yep, you're clumsy and you're trying to get out of the way. And Jamie Ben just continued to follow through. Natushkin pushes it ahead, holds up, trying to find Sagan. Fans unhappy with the lack of call as the period comes to an end. Plus they got a good view of it on the big screen. So Calgary down by one to Dallas. Another sluggish start for the Flames as we send it to Darren Millard. Period outshot in the first 11-6. But as Eric Francis alluded to, Charlie, I thought towards the latter half of that first period started to become a little more dangerous. They were making the plays. They were skating a little bit quicker. E.J. Brody across the line, looking for the tip, got it. But it's up into the mesh, so the faceoff will stay in the Dallas end. Nets off its moorings. Unrobada not happy with Matt Stage, and they're barking at each other a little bit. Great play there by Brody just to wait. You can see him slowing down, slow enough that the forwards were trying to get to the front of that. That was redirected by a back-checking Robada at that point. Uh, but again, that's the way things happen. When you can slow down, get control of the puck, don't just throw the puck at the net from that position because the goaltender is going to stop it. So now you're looking at a redirect and you're having more traffic going to the net. Dylan reverses it. The goal scorer in this game, Robodon, ahead. This is Vern Fiddler. 
some speculation that Fiddler, unhappy with his ice time, might be looking to play elsewhere as the season goes on. But speculation at best as this one comes all the way back down. Icing call. Take a look at the veteran Vern Fiddler. And that's something that, yeah, as a coach or as a player, I mean, you, you make the best of it. You get your opportunity, and you, you have to make the best of it. Right now he's on the third line of playing with Sean Horkoff and Rich Peverly, and I, and I tell you what, that's a pretty productive line for the Dallas Stars. That's a big part of what uh, they're trying to accomplish in Dallas. Uh, everybody's scoring some goals. They're getting a lot of good chances on the offense. And to be honest, you, you look at Lindy Ruff, he doesn't give a lot of ice time to certain players. He plays it pretty even. Well, Ruff did meet with Fiddler prior to this road trip. And wouldn't talk about the details as those are behind the closed door, so to speak. There's Lee Stempniak with another hit, but Nachushkin keeps on coming. Ben with room, shot wide of the net. Bologoski plays it back over. Jamie Bent into the middle. Nachushkin on the backhand, reverses. We'll leave it for Ben. Towards the net. Sagan scores! Got his own rebound and beat Reto Berra 2 0 Dallas. Reto Berra does what he has to do, make the saves, but this then it falls onto the shoulder of the defenseman. Unfortunately for TJ Brody, he couldn't get a handle on Sagan at this point as the play just develops back to the defensive position where Jamie Ben is. Good hard shot through the screen. One opportunity, two opportunities, and the third one, he's able to get it behind of the goaltender, Reto Berra. And, uh, simple, hard-working goal right there. Puck at the net, lots of traffic. Unfortunately for Berra, that's the third rebound, and uh, you can't allow a guy like Taylor Sagan to, uh, to make that play. His ninth of the year. Ben likely to get an assist, his second point in this game, his fourth point against the Flames this year. And Dallas with an early 2-0 lead here in the second period. Chason looking to add to it. Comes back to the point. Gonchar a little too deep. And the Flames need to find an answer. Chason cross ice. Into the middle. That one deflects just wide. Hoodler to Monaghan. Back to Yuri Hoodler. Not a lot of room for Hoodler, but he gets it to Berchi. Pass comes to the point. Russell is there. He'll play it low. Jordy Bent can't control it. Hoodler has it in front. And Berchi stopped by Lettinen. Weidman up high. Knocks it down. Chason is there. Trying to freeze it along the boards. Now Weidman gets it free. Can't control it. Eric Cole doesn't see it. Hoodler does. Knocks down Cole. But can't get it by Jordy Bent. Backman coming over, lays the body in on Ben, digs the puck free, gets it back from Berchi. Backlund to the point, Russell over to Weidman, shoots, that one's tip, goes to the corner, Ben has it, can't get it by Backlund, nice play by the Flames, Michael Backlund to cut it off, finally Dallas relieved the pressure. Good pushback on the next shift after a goal is scored, spending a lot of time in that offensive zone. Brian McGrath. Back to the birthday boy, Tim Jackman, celebrating his 32nd tonight. Backlund has it. Michael Backlund still out there. The give and go. Tim Jackman has a puck and no stick, and then the stick knocked into the corner. Coming back to get it is Ladislav Schmid. No icing. Being tailed by Travis Moore. Roussel is there. He has it for Dallas. Goes back to the blue line. Hits Robidaw with the puck. Goes to the corner. Schmid will play it out into the neutral zone. Sagan from Ben and Nachushkin. And 119 is the goal here in the second period to give Dallas a 2-0 lead. Slap back into the Calgary end. Reminiscent to the, the game against San Jose on Tuesday night. There's just no energy in this building right now. As Dallas has taken it away from the home crowd. We talked about... Uh, Energy is developed through offensive opportunities. And that's something the Flames have not developed. In their last couple games here at the Dome, the excitement consistently from shift to shift. Then comes out of the net. He'll play it to Daly. Up along the boards. Sagan. His shot taken away by Butler with an active stick. Right back to Galliardi. Holds up. Plays it out to center. But again, the pass errant. Picked up. Sagan to the middle, Ben scores! 
Oh, Jamie Benn with a highlight reel goal. 3-0 Dallas. All set up by a careless pass on the backhand through the neutral ice zone by TJ Galliardi. No play, keep it on the boards. It's still a very tight game. Right here, the Flames have control of it. They can't make that clean pass. There's the spin around the backwards, intercepting of the pass right there. And Ben with a good head of steam and, again, size. He protects that puck so well. Sagan with a nice little saucer pass, goes right to the backhand. You have the reach and size and strength of a Ben. And he beats Aretha Barra, and like we saw in Dallas, another timeout being called by the Flames because they can score in bunches. As the Flames will take a break, and Bob Hartley flummoxed by the performance of his team in this game, was expecting them to bounce back after that San Jose game, but that has not happened. Pro Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megastore. Take a look at the Flames bench after that timeout, but what a game from Jamie Benz so far. This combination and chemistry has been so good from the start of the season, but it's even better for the Dallas Stars where you can see a lot of these points are coming from on the road. 12 road games each, 13 points for Jamie Benn and 14 for Tyler Sagan, and including a big night by that big line here tonight that involved in all three of the goals. Ben working on a three-point evening, a goal and two helpers. As he picks up his seventh of the year, Sagan and Kulagoski. Shots are 14 to seven in favor of Dallas, up three nothing. As we near the five minute mark of period number two. Dallas with two goals on three shots so far here in this second period, but really no chance for the goaltender on any of them as it's all about coverage. Machushkin hits the blue line, he'll drop it for Ben. Ben still with it, shoots, that one's blocked by the Flames in front. As Calgary. Again, caught standing around. Hard pass by Russell, tipped in by Colborn. Letting it out of the net. Barks out some instructions. Brendan Dillon's back to get it. Pass, cut off by Hoodler. Monaghan plays it behind the net. Hustling in is Shane O'Brien. Can't handle the puck, and it's picked up by Eric Cole. Three on two for Dallas. Cole, cross-ice pass tipped away by Schmid. And Berchi picks it up. The Flames have a three on two. Berchi looking for Hoodler. And that one's picked off. And here come the Stars back the other way. Chason to Cole. Back to Chason. Shoots and Vera makes the save. And a penalty coming up. An interference call as the back referee made it. And it looks like Calgary is going to go to the power play for the first time in this game. A little bit of river hockey there, back and forth three times uh, for both teams as the penalty interference call will go against Chason. And, uh, but you can't get into this type of a race with the Dallas Stars. Give them go a good save there by Retta Berra. And there's the interference call right at the end of that play. But you have to take advantage of, of certain situations. So a good one was uh, Sven Berchi, normally a confident player coming down that left wing. He's got to make a shot on that when you're trailing by three goals. David Jones complaining to the linesman, Donnie Henderson. As Henderson threw out Jones. Hitler wins the draw, and he gets the puck down into Calgary territory. Barra. As Colborn gives it back to Weidman. Calgary snapped that ugly 0 for 30 streak with a man advantage against San Jose. They went 1 for 2 against the Sharks on Tuesday night with the power play. And when you have a good skating team like Dallas, they can be very good on the penalty kill. The Flames have to really button down and make those passes direct and on the stick. Weidman. Shoots, Lettman freezes it to the body. Face-off coming up for Calgary with 120 to go in the power play. Dennis Weidman, as we mentioned, is 600 National Hockey League game. Gets a good shot on net there. He has 74 career goals. Chip in 209 assists. So pretty good 
career for him from the from the back end as far as offense. He's having a good season, averaging 27, almost 27 and a half minutes a game, ice time. So Hartley keeping the line of Monahan, Berchi, and Hoodler together as a power play unit. Dylan plays it back to the blue line. Brody can't keep it in. Pestered on the play by Horkoff. Brody. Has a bunch of white jerseys around him. Garvin won't let him enter the zone. And Calgary turned away. Now Chris Russell's turn. He darts across the red line to Monahan. Holds up. Monahan back into the middle, and it's knocked away by Garvin. Following up, though, Brody. Calgary maintained control. Now Hoodler to the middle, shoots, and Lettman fights that one off to the corner. Brody over to Russell. Hoodler has the puck. 35 seconds to go in the penalty to chase on. Russell trying to go cross ice with the pass. Hoodler hunting it down, but it's taken away. And Garbett trying to spring Eakin. Cody Eakin behind Russell. Eakin takes a swipe at it. Stopped by Reto Berra. Impressive play by Russell not to take a penalty on that. He's done that numerous times in the last couple weeks, utilizing his skating ability. Camilleri shot, and that one off the bend of the corner. Speed to Camilleri. Down low. Penalized player back out on the ice. Stepniak turns around. Stopped by Kari Lettinen. Chase on back out on the ice, and he'll lead the rush for Dallas. He's hit by Dennis Weidman. That now trademark hip check of Dennis Weidman coming into play, and he hurt Chase on with that hit. Officially, Calgary now 0 for 1 on the power play in this game. And here comes the dangerous Jamie Benn. Three points in the hockey game. Cross ice, Sagan scores! Make it four for Ben as Sagan bends the twine, four nothing Dallas. Flames have struggled all season with teams with big scoring lines and this is no different tonight and they are playing as best as I've ever seen these three play. And again, Sagan defensively starts the play, gets it out to Ben and then he just stays down that right wing, stays close to the play, gets that great feed and Knows where he has to go on this one, and that's just top shelf. Not a lot of room over that left shoulder. As Reta Berra, unfortunately for him, is getting the hook. And not any reason to blame the goaltender on these four goals. It's the first time that Bob Hartley has pulled a netminder this year. Kari Ramo will come in. As Reto Berra giving up four goals on 17 shots, but left to his own defenses on most of them. Damage all done by that one line. Ben was the only player that got an assist on the Robodov play. But Sagan started that play defensively as they moved up the ice. Well, not quite three goals in 61 seconds. It's three goals in seven minutes and 13 seconds here in the second period for the Dallas Stars at the moment wide open. As Kari Lettman comes out to play it. So the goal at 8.32, Tyler Sagan is 10th of the year. Jamie Benn gets the assist. Benn with four points in this game. A goal and three helpers. Now Eric Cole shoots. Ramo caught a piece of it. Lagoski. Ramo doesn't look comfortable right now. He can up high block. Now a chance. Bad line change is staged and can't get to it. Brendan Dillon off. Dallas a little sloppy there, but the Flames unable to make them pay. Gratton tipping it in. Daly back to get it. Puck intercepted in the middle by Michael Backlund. Brian McGratton knocks it down. Shoots. That one goes wide. Garbutt tipping it ahead. Roussel is there. Knocked back in. Flames trapped offside. Now Jackman trying to reestablish the play for Calgary. Well, we're going to see all kinds of different combinations and ice time from this point on, being down by four. Bob Hartley will be trying to look for some kind of spark. In front, Rommel stopping it. Picked up by McGrath. He'll play it ahead to Backlund. But Brendan Dillon is there. Dallas Stars have been terrific on the road. 
have won five of their last six and won four in a row on the road coming into this game. Here's Jordy Ben. As Gonchar relays it ahead, Garbin into the middle. Rich Peverly shoots into the glove of Kari Ramo, and he'll hang on to that. As the guy with a lot on his mind right now looks on, his team down by four. It's Tellus Flames Hockey. The last time these two teams played, it was a bad second period for Calgary as well. Uh, a bad minute and 13 seconds. seconds. Chason gets one, Jamie Benn gets the next one, and then right off the face off a redirect again by Alec Chason. And that was pretty much it for the, the Calgary Flames in a very short period of time. A little bit longer here in the second period, but still the same results, giving up those scoring opportunities. Calgary down by four. Just past the midway point of the hockey game. As Monaghan ahead to Berchi. Bert Fiddler working over Sven Berchi. Played along the boards. Shane O'Brien is there, but it's popped out. And here comes Dallas. Peverly, pass intercepted, Sven Berchi, nice back check, and he'll dump it out. It looks like it's going to be an icing call. Nope, waved off, so the Flames able to make the change. There's Jamie Bent tipping it in. Four-point night, that is a career best for Jamie Bent. He's had three-point nights on many occasions, recently in Winnipeg, but never a four-point game, and he has one tonight. Further strengthening his case, perhaps, for inclusion in Team Canada at the upcoming Olympics. He has really been playing some very good hockey, both at home and as we saw with the stats on the road, which is more difficult to do as far as getting offensive numbers because of the home ice matchup advantage. Sagan still out there. No slouch himself on tonight. He's got two goals and a helper. As Taylor's or Taylor again coming over from Boston in the offseason. Now all alone, Garbin in, scores! 5-0 Dallas. Ryan Garbin beats Reto Berra, and he picks up his second goal of the season. Mistake again, defensive coverage uh, by uh, the Calgary Flames. That just allows uh, Garbin, who is coming on a line change, able to get wide open. Right here, the Flames making that change very slow. And one quick outlet pass. Here comes Garbutt off the wall. Gets that shot. Harry Ramo has no chances. It goes just underneath the bar, far side. And that's where, again, you've got to be mentally sharp as well as physically, especially when you, you're making line changes like that. Shots are 22 to 11 in favor of Dallas. As Antoine Roussel plays it out in front. Roussel will get one of the assists on Garbutt's second of the year. As Jackman now gives chase. Michael Backlund on the puck first. Taken to the boards by Robidoff. Warren tipping it ahead. Roussel over skates it. Picked up and played back. Here's Weidman. Michael Backlund turning it around. Jackman over skates the puck. Chase on. His outlet is Dillon. Dillon. Into Calgary territory. Shot blocked by Ladislav Speed. Here comes Berchi. Two on one. Brian McGratton trying to catch up. to the pass just too far in front of Brian McGratton. Berchi taken into the end boards heavily. Monahan comes over, finishes the check on Chason as the puck dumped down the ice. Rama will set it up for Speed. Take advantage of your shooting opportunities, and that's what Sven Berchi does so well with that offensive confidence. And again, he Neglects to shoot the puck and, make, and makes the pass. Peverly ahead and another odd man rush. Horkoff, three on one. Sean Horkoff holds up, goes deep, no play. Nice defensive move by TJ Brody as the former Oiler had nothing to shoot at and nowhere to pass the puck. Too much time, too much space, and he took all the time he needed to, and that allowed the Flames, fortunately, to get back and regroup. Flames getting a lesson in their own game right now as far as the hustle and work ethic that the Dallas Stars are putting on them right now. Lee Stempniak can't get the puck deep. Fiddler pops it out. Colborn is there. Over to TJ Brody. 
Mike Camilleri. Can he get something going? Finding Stepniak, but Pologoski in the way. Peverly knocks down the puck. His pass goes off Camilleri. Fiddler trying to catch up to it. There is Russell, now Weidman. Long lead pass, Stepniak is on the wrong side of the blue line. Dallas running away with it here in Calgary. Friday Night Hockey features Ontario Junior Hockey action as the London Knights visit the Kingston Frontenacs, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, tomorrow on Sportsnet 1. Canadian Pacific Goals for Kids is proudly sponsored by Canadian Pacific and its 2,700 railroaders based in Calgary. For every Flames goal this season, the railway will donate $250 to Kids Sport and the Flames Even Strength Program. Goals by Flames help CP build stronger kids and stronger communities. So the Flames in a deep hole here late in the second period as Dallas has come out firing on all cylinders, led by the four points of Jamie Benn, the three of Tyler Sagan. Chasing Reto Berra, the starter, Kari Ramo in relief here in the second period. So, so much for being a tired team coming on back-to-back -back <laughs> games as yeah. Dallas Stars really did a, a big number up in Dallas, up in Edmonton last night. It was a one-nothing goal a game, two empty netters, but then they come right back down here. And now they scored eight consecutive goals in Alberta. Ben out to take the draw with Matt Stajan. He gets thrown out. Sagan will come in. He wins it back to the point. Dylan. Chushkin gets it to Sagan. Cross ice. Ovidad shot. Deflects on the way through. Doesn't make it all the way to Kari Ramos' net. Now to get it out. 22-11, the shots in favor of Dallas here in the second period. Just over five minutes to go. Jones finds stage and room, shoots, scores! Max stage and beats Kari Lettman, Calgary, with a little light. All starts out with some very good passing out of the defensive zone. A block shot by the Calgary Flames and keeps the puck in front of them. And they move that puck so quickly at this point up to Jones. He waits. Nice little fake there. And Matt Stage and head up all the way. You can see what he was looking at. He picked that far corner, kept an eye on it, and just pounded it above the pad and below the glove. Now Lettinen's left side staging picks up his second of the season and if you're the calgary flames you've got to pounce right away it's a long way to come back but you got to keep pushing one of the lessons the young players need to learn in the organization is that you got to keep moving forward well, everybody knew it was going to be a tough year as far as competing in certain nights and it's a matter of never giving up and Competing till the end of the game. A little scuffle. Behind the flame net is Roussel, who's known as a bit of a pest. Tangled up with Shane O'Brien. Uh, he was on an icing call. He, on, <laughs> he doesn't know what happened here. And O'Brien just turned around and just gave him a shot. And down they both went on the icing call. Doesn't seem to be Henley, Henley being called here. Matt Stajan's goal gives us our first winner and on behalf of Safeway and Nabob Coffee by swiping a free club card, Patrick Maines of Chestermere has won a Bradley Original Electric Smoker. Congratulations, Patrick. And Stajan gets the goal from Jones and Weidman who picks up an assist in his 600 NHL game. And now we got a fight. Roussel and O'Brien. Roussel with four fights this year. This is Shane O'Brien's second. And he's trying to get those rights free. O'Brien's just uh, biding his time. He's picking his spots. And now he's got his, his range. Roussel, who was on the ice. That one ends almost as quickly as it starts. And Shane O'Brien spinning the helmet in the corner. Roussel going off for repairs. And it was interesting 
how they lined up as O'Brien was back on the ice for the faceoff. There were some words said right from the start. And the challenge was set. The puck was falsely dropped, but they went right at it. And O'Brien just biding his time and waits for his time and threw a couple big uppercuts and then a little bit of a spin. And finishes the rest of the period with four 26 to go in the locker room. We'll see if that and along with the match stage and goes Sparks Calgary late here in this second period. It's a long way back. Cole checked along the boards by Camilleri. Goes to Gonchar. Roussel second amongst rookies last year in penalty minutes. So again, not a guy that's adverse to getting involved physically. Neither is Shane O'Brien. Cole to the middle, Cody Eakin to the side of the net, Rama with the save, and oh boy, Chason had a wide open net, but he stumbled, and the Flames catch a break. That one is going to haunt Alex Chason tonight when he puts his head down on his pillow. He goes off Stepniak into the Flames bench. Calgary down by four, could have been five, but it just didn't work out. Let's tell us, Flames hockey. I'd like to remind you, Safeway's featured participating product for tonight's game is Nabob Coffee. And the new issue of Sportsnet Magazine is out. Toronto Maple Leafs are defying the conventions of hockey analytics. No, it's not a fluke, but maybe the game they're playing has no margin for error. Subscribe today at www.sportsnet.ca slash magazine. Are they good or are they lucky? Sometimes it's good to be lucky and sometimes you're lucky if you're good. Well, they got some pretty good goaltending. They got some So they're lucky there. Fantastic goaltending right now. DJ Brody, this fires. It's Rich Peverly. Back to the point. Daly. As Horkoff with it. Into the corner. Fiddler. Around the boards, you get the sense that Lindy Ruff sent the message. All right, let's not let this get too loose. There's a real good shift for Dallas right there. Now Calgary trying to answer back. Butler jumping into the rush. Gets a little help from Sven Berchi to Monaghan in the slot. Drop pass. Hoodler shoots. Hit the post. Oh, Yuri Hoodler beat Kari Lettinen, but not the iron. Not just the post, the inside of the post. Now Matt Stage in the goal score for Calgary, but it's offside. Hoodler shot a little late. And you said it, my friend. Yuri Hoodler. Good back. Work by Sven Berchi to keep it going. Monahan, no look pass to Hoodler, who has 19 points in the year inside of the pipe and back out the other side. Matt staging out to take the draw. And right now it's just little battles for the Flames. They have to get themselves back, feeling good about themselves, win a couple shifts, win the end of this period, and go into the third period and try to work something positive off. Ben has it. He'll play it. Back to Dylan. Bounces on Robota. He opened the scoring in the first period. He picked up his second of the season. Shot by Natushkin. Handled easily by Rommel. As the rookie broke his stick on the play. TJ Galliardi to the middle. Russell gains the line. Button hooks. Drops it. Staging a little late to the party. And the puck picked up. Dallas have it, they'll rim it around the boards. They want to make a change. Nope, went up into the mesh. The faceoff will come out in the neutral zone. Yep. This young man has been a great addition to the Dallas lineup. Jimmy Neal is really excited to get this young player in his lineup. He just brings so much different chemistry to the club, whether it's offensive numbers, which we're seeing a good sign of tonight and defensive numbers but more importantly he's been a winner already and he's still so young just early 20s winning that stanley cup with the boston bruins and of course going to the finals last year you can't replace that kind of experience especially at that age sagan will be roger millions guest during intermission as mentioned already two goals three point evening for number 91 in white jody ben back to get it tailed on the play by camilleri 
comes free. Colburn couldn't nail it down. Now he'll try. Turns around, shoots, goes wide. Stemiak chases it to the boards. Tried to go back to Butler. Now Camilleri with it. The dangerous Mike Camilleri. Got caught up in some skates. And chase on. We'll just flip it to the Flames blue line. Brody knocks it down. Camilleri to Stemiak. Trying to bounce it ahead to Monaghan off the boards. The carrot didn't work. Minute and ten to go here in the second period. Stars exploding for four goals to blow it wide open. Calgary answering back with one. There's one minute remaining in the second period. Ben, cross ice, hits Garbin. Warren going through the middle, but we've got a touch on that puck. Travis Warren, the leading scorer in the American Hockey League. Protecting it, shot goes wide. Picked up by Goligoski. Alex Goligoski has a pair of helpers in this game. Now a chance. Ben Berchi charging ahead. Hoodler trying to catch up. Berchi turns. Has to pass. Comes back for Monaghan. And Trevor Daly with a similar play to the one TJ Brody made on Sean Horkoff earlier in the period. Too much time and again too much space. Ben Berchi, that's his third attempt coming off that left wing. Berchi finding offensive opportunities, but unable to convert so far in this game. With him, it's confidence. Right now, he has to regain and find that confidence, that offensive confidence that he is so good with. The Dallas Stars leading Calgary 5-1 through 40 minutes. We're going to turn it over to Darren Millard in the Hockey Central panel. We return to Calgary, the Dallas Stars with a huge second period. As a result, they are in full command after 40 minutes with a 5-1 advantage over the Calgary Flames. Eric Francis stops by one more time. Well, Ben Sagan, Nakushkin are putting on a clinic, but you know what? I think at the Flames dressing room, they had lots of discuss because those three got some help from the home team. They sure did. Giveaways, bad uh, give, uh, breakdowns and bad line changes, all contributing to this terrible second period that the Calgary Flames just had. You hear here, TJ Galliardi blindly throws it up the middle. Everybody knows you don't do something like that at any level of hockey, and they pay with it. Second goal of the game for the Stars. Bob Hartley calls a timeout to calm these guys down because they're making some very simple mistakes, and the breakdowns in their game are pretty simple. Here's another case of a situation where they just get caught on a very bad line change. A gift of a goal for the Dallas Stars. Yet another example of how things are just falling apart here for the Calgary Flames. Here's a pinch from Butler, and just in the blink of an eye, the Stars have a three-on-one break. They don't score on this one. The, the Flames got lucky on a good play by Brody. But this is another example of what is going sideways for the Flames tonight. And there's other things going on as far as the Flames are concerned. Other teams, San Jose, tonight Dallas, allowing the Flames. The Flames cannot gain the zone. The other teams are forcing them to play in center ice and maybe not even letting them get to the defensive blue line. Yeah, you know, early in this season when the Flames were playing such entertaining hockey and it was the river hockey back and forth, they were able to gain the zone using their speed, getting through the neutral zone and setting up some really great plays. Teams have keyed on that now. They've figured it out. And the Flames are very rarely able to gain the zone. One of the only examples I have in this entire game of them being able to gain the zone cleanly comes right here and stage and buries it with the Flames' only goal of the night. They just can't get that creative entry into the zone and from that, all their shots are basically peripheral and that explains why their shot totals have been so low the last two games. And it's incumbent upon them to find the right movement to get that back. Robin Charlie. Well, let's take a look at tonight's scoring summaries brought to you by Panago Pizza. Before, during, or after the game, get a fresh Panago. Just the one goal in the first period, Stefan Robidal, and then it was all Dallas. Sagan, Ben, Sagan again, Garbutt before Matt Stajan is able to get the game to 5-1, to one. but uh, right now it's the Jamie and Tyler show. With Jamie Ben, four points. Tyler Sagan, three points. And the four points for Ben, that's a career high. Not surprising, perhaps, that he's having the type of game he's having here in Calgary, which just happens to be the headquarters of Hockey Canada, who didn't invite them to his uh, their ball hockey tournament in August for the Olympic orientation camp. Uh, he was a notable absence in that camp, although I think Hockey Canada was quite up front. They said there's going to be some guys who don't come to this camp that are going to have a chance to make the team, and this is certainly a good audition tape for Jamie Ben. 
you play your way on the team, and if he keeps playing the way he has been playing, especially uh, on the road, and you have that combination with Sagan, it makes it very difficult not to consider him. There's another one, and a hat trick for Tyler Sagan as Nachuskin's shot deflects right to Sagan, and he picks up his third of the evening. You're going to have nights like this, and you just wish there were more of them as an offensive player. Simple, basic plays on the wall, shot on net, rebound, and it's positioning as Sagan goes around the net, gets himself into a good position. We see Mike Camilleri do, do that quite a bit. And right here, as they get it up the wall, not much happening here. A turn, quick snap, that shot on the net goes off the right pad of Kari Ramo. Sagan just standing right there on the off wing. Stick to the center of the ice. And makes no mistake there. And to Eric Francis' point in his conversation with Roger Million, just too many tonight that look too easy for Dallas. And you know that the Calgary Flames will be back at practice tomorrow trying to refocus with Edmonton coming in on Saturday. And Ben, another assist, five points for Jamie Ben. As Nachushkin and Ben getting the helpers just 30 seconds into the third period. As Roussel coming out of the box, so he gets greeted by his teammates from a fight with Shane O'Brien late in the second period. Sean Monahan out with Yuri Hoodler and Sven Berchi back at the point. Russell and Weidman. I think coming into the season, the Calgary Flames were well aware that there could be the potential for nights like this, but how do you mitigate it? And more importantly, what do you learn from it? That's going to be the most important thing coming out of a game like this. Lots of lessons can be learned by the coaching staff and management of the, of the Calgary Flames. And yes, they realize that, that what's going on here in Calgary. And you know, you see the good nights where the battle uh, level is up there and everybody's making things happen. But tonight is, is even more of a telltale sale sign for these management and for coaching staff to who doesn't push back in games like this. After it, Horkoff pressuring Weidman. Weidman in his 600th NHL game tonight has an assist on Matt Stajan's lone flame goal. Peverly, shot turned away. Now it's picked up, Sven Berchi. Been all around the puck tonight, has created a lot, but nothing to show for it. Gary Hoodler to Schmid. Hoodler's shot. That one's blocked. Horkoff got in front of it. And it's tapped out across the red line. Schmid greets it. This time Schmid acquired last week by the Calgary Flames along with goaltender Olivier Waugh, who was assigned to Alaska in the ECHL for Roman Horak and Laurent Bassois. Puck brought in offside. Faceoff coming back out in the neutral zone. Intact Insurance is proud to sponsor the Calgary Flames and all the fans who carry a torch for them. Intact Insurance, you're back. Shop and swipe your club card at Safeway today and you could be our next lucky winner. Watch future Sportsnet telecasts and you could win a week of unlimited luxury at Dreams Resorts and Spas, courtesy of Red Tag Dancing. Puck played in. Flames after it. Schmid can't hold the line. Now Eakin after it. Cody Eakin, right up in the corner. Squirts free along the boards. Galliardi looking for it. Jones there too. Chason comes over and it's grabbed by Matt Stage and he takes a stiff check as Jory Ben leaned into him. Now Stage and with some room. Long shot this time. Harry Lettman was ready for it. Jackman fires it wide. Gratton after it, but it's shot away. And T.J. Brody back to get it in his own end. And on the other side, you look at what Lindy Ruff is going to be looking from his guys when they're up by five, if they can continue to work on the intensity. And right now you're seeing them still with a lot of push. Obviously an emotional day yesterday for Ruff with everything that took place in Buffalo. His former stomping grounds and his good friend Darcy Regeer relieved of his duties. You know that was weighing on his mind. Yeah, I think it was weighing on his mind, but I think on the other side, you, you look at what a tremendous job he has done. When he was coaching the Buffalo Sabres, 
Uh, he coached uh, 1,165 games in Buffalo with 575 wins. Ryan McGrath shot doesn't make it all the way through. Now Roussel. As Warren goes wide on Brody. Roussel now picks up the puck. Tapped away by Brody. Now it's grabbed. Here's Michael Backlund. A little pep in the step of Michael Backlund. Some block shots in this game, but unable to show much offensively. Here's Garvin. A goal in the second period. Sagan looking in front. That's off the side of the net as Ben looking for point number six in this game. Colburn to Mike Camilleri. He'll hook it back to Weidman. So Colburn parked in front of the net. Shot through. Lennon makes the save. Colborn has it on the backhand. Penalty coming up, and it's going to go against the Dallas Stars. A hooking call. And Calgary will go to the power play for the second time in this game. Trevor Daly can't handle big Joe Colborn as he picks up that rebound. Wanted to stuff it in behind Kerry Lightning at that point. The hook happened, and as he was turning, trying to regroup and come out the backside, you can see the opportunities. And... Ben with a good opportunity again as Rammel got over very quickly. Just caught the side of the net. The guilty party in the penalty box. Penalty minutes 17 and 18 for Trevor Daly on the season. Monahan to take the draw. Out there with Russell Camilleri at the point. Broken stick and heading off is Monahan. So a little four on four. Here comes Monahan back into the play. Stepniak with it. Back to Russell. Yuri Hoodler. Too hard for Stepniak, but coming over is Camilleri. He'll give it back to Hoodler in front. And Monaghan couldn't get a piece of it. Yuri Hoodler. Stepniak trying to walk out in front on Kari Lettman. Defenseman loses his stick. That's Robodot. Hoodler. Back to the point. Russell. Hoodler. There's a face full of Stepniak in front of Kerry Lettinen right now. Shot, Camilleri. That one deflects to the corner. Mike Camilleri, five goals in his last five games. Up top, into the middle, Monaghan shoots. Kerry Lettinen with the save, and Stepniak knocking at it. Now Monaghan's had enough. And the youngster pushing and shoving behind the net. Everybody's involved. Mike Camilleri's got two stars for the price of one. Russo trying to make something happen away from the play goes right at Camilleri and then here's the fight with Brendan Dillon and Lee Stepniak. Stepniak not a guy that tends to throw down a lot. That one ends real quick. Mike Camilleri's gloves are off. I'm not sure if a fight ever really ensued but the frustration boiling over on behalf of the Flames as Lee Stepniak with three career fights just involved in his fourth with Brendan Dillon. Here's how it all started. Flames moving around the perimeter. Got the shot through. As they redirect that Monaghan shot. And then Stepniak just continues to push and shove at that point. Looking for that root rebound. Just sitting right in front of Kerry Letton. And then the pushing and shoving on the far side. Donald Roussel. A little push on Camilleri who didn't like that. So Dylan and Roussel are in the Dallas side of things. Stepniak and Camilleri sitting in the box for Calgary. Daly already in there. There's things filling up on the penalty side. Let's take a look at the big hit of the game brought to you by Old Dutch Boots. Quality lives here and sharing starts here. Dennis Weidman doing a great job defensively. Comes over with a big hit check on Alex Chason. Down he went. And that hurt the young player. He's been struggling skating all night. So Dennis Weidman with a big crunch. The old Dutch crunch of the night. Game 600 for that young man. And he's talking things over with the linesman right now as you've got a couple of flames parked in front of the referees in front of the penalty box. That's Jamie Benn over having a conversation with Matt Stajan and both officials, Tom Cowell and Rob Martell, represented in this debriefing as well. At this moment, nothing extra up on the board. 
faceoff will be in the neutral zone. At least that's where the puck is. Bob Hartley looks on, and I thought you made a great point early in his period about the evaluation. And, you know, as much as this game has maybe got out of control for Calgary, it's okay. Who's invested in it? Is that what you were kind of talking about? You earn it. Bob Hartley came in at the beginning of training camp and said the guys, whether you're up here or in Abbotsford, they're the guys that are going to earn the ice time that they get. And you're not going to be just given to you. So you have to make sure that you continue to play the way and the best way you can and this is the best avenue that you can look at right here in games like this you have to see which guys are going to show up and which guys are going to continue to uh, compete right to the end of the game Berchie finds Russell with room tip scores David Jones with a great redirect, and it goes back to little battles. You win the battle, Sven Berchi along the wall. Great feed to Russell, and Russell, that's yeah, not a good game for the defenseman, but what he did here, good heads up, slap pass right to Jones, and there's the battling, competing along the wall, trying to find that loose puck. Sven Berchi all the way out to Russell. Russell head up, he's not even trying to score on this shot. He sees the stick of Jones down on the ice, and it's just a quick redirect. Hold that stick tight, and it goes in off Jones, so the Flames have it back to 6-2. to two. Now within four, but the Flames, Flames goal, with back-to-back -back power play goals in their last couple of games. And David Jones picks up his fourth of the year. Russell and Berchi get the assists. And for Jones, that's got to, again, won't feel good considering the score right now. But last year, just three goals for Colorado. Four already this season here in Calgary. And the points have been coming his way in the last little bit. So that's something that, uh, again, little things that you try to continue to work on and bring a positive finishing this game and into the next game against Edmonton on Saturday. Get you caught up on some of the housekeeping. Camilleri roughing Stemniak fighting Major Roussel. A roughing call and Dylan a fighting major for Dallas. So that's how the penalties shook down just prior to that power play marker. Trailing on the play. Nichushkin back up top. That one's blocked by Ladislav Schmid. Trevor Daly unloaded, and again, back to the evaluation process. Up by, or down by four, and Schmidt still dropping in front of pucks. Good example right there. How, who wants to play and who doesn't want to play. There's Cody Eakin dumping it into the corner. That one skips on Kari Rambo. That's Obera started this game, gave up four goals on 17 shots. Hard to fault him on many of those. Kari Rambo's come in relief. Berchi. Slaps it ahead, looking for the return pass, tied up by Cody Eakin. Berchi takes Eakin hard into the boards. Now Yuri Hoodler walking off said boards. Brody shoots off the side of the net. In front, hits Monaghan. Hoodler again with it. Berchi cruising in the slot area. Now he goes below the goal line, has the puck. Berchi looking for Monaghan. He gives chase. Up along the boards, back down low. Berchi, or Hoodler, I should say, has it. Berchi's in front of the net, along with Monaghan. It comes to Berchi, and a hard shot. Looking to pick the corner, comes all the way back down in his own end. Nothing wrong with that. He knows that he had a good opportunity. He made a good attempt at that top shelf. He wasn't happy with the results, but there's that compete battle. Sven Berchi's bringing his game up another notch here in the third. P.J. Galliardi. Shot goes wide. Kari Lettman's net. Jones comes over. David Jones with a two-point game for Calgary. And he trade all of that to take away four Dallas goals at this point. Hold one. Takes a couple of whacks from Vern Fiddler. Frees the puck and Porkoff out to center. Rich Peverly. Very quiet in this game. peverly has been a real catalyst on the road of late for Dallas. Russell finds Jackman. Ben flipping it out to center. Garbett swings at it. Morin picks it up. 
Travis Moore goes wide. Rommel with the save. He knocks down Garbutt. Nice work by Matt Stajan through center. Stajan weaves his way into the Dallas end, drops it. Long shot taken wide by McGratton. Shane O'Brien slashes at it, keeps it alive. Here's McGratton. Oh, and Lettman had to be sharp there. He had Butler going to the net, but McGratton tried to squeeze one through the five hole. McGratton turns, dribbles it to the net. Jackman. On top of the puck, here's Jackman McGratton, and the puck's bounced back to the point. They're picking it up, Brody. Good push back here by the Flames. It's a big hill to climb right now, but you're getting evaluated. You're getting the fans back into it. A little goal Flames goal here. Berchi across center. Hoodler, as this line is being given some extra time to work in the third period. Why not? Well, you really see who's going to be getting the ice time here in the third, the rest of this game, who's been working the hardest. Michael Backlund trying to split the defenseman. Berchie knocked down behind the net. Jordy Ben initiating contact there. Chipped off the boards. Fiddler after it. Weidman gets to the puck. Dennis Weidman turns in front of Kari Rommel. Up to Backlund. Has Berchie with him. Backlund gains some ground. Can't get the shot through. Weidman following up, trying to pass. Didn't work, but he got back to it. Now Hoodler. Russell at the point. Down the wall. Russell's shot goes over top of the net. Waiting for it is Weidman. Berchi has it poked away. Goligoski gets a stick up high from Berchi and a penalty coming up to Calgary. As Sven Berchi aggressively looking for the puck, it came at the cost of a minor. So for the first time in this game, Dallas will go to the power play up by four on Calgary. Sven Berchi double minor for high sticking. And he'll sit in the box. Now, I don't know if everybody knows this, but we've got an international hockey superstar, at least in France, in our midst. Antoine Roussel representing his home country in the World Hockey Championships this past May. And he scores the biggest goal ever in French hockey history. Second period, that stands up as your game winner. Walks out of the corner for the first time in history. France beats Russia 2-1. Unfortunately, the French will not be playing in the Olympics in Sochi, but Antoine Roussel had a chance to talk to him when we were in Dallas about it, and he was just tickled pink to discuss it because it was a big deal and very important for the French hockey program to have a little success, and he's so proud to be part of it. And it's huge wins, little battles like that for countries like France to, to compete. And, uh, you know, definitely they're way behind a lot of the, the superpowers, but uh, they still love to compete. And hopefully get some big wins like that. One of the things he thought was really neat is that it did get some media coverage back home in France. He gave a little exposure to ice hockey over there. And uh, very, very proud of that moment, as he should be. So a double minor to spend Berchi. Calgary, though, with a little offense from Lee Stemniak. Stemniak with two shorthanded points on the season so far for the Flames. He was tied for first in the National Hockey League in the short lockout season last year. He had four shorthanded points. Here comes Trevor Daly. Shoots, stopped by Kari Rommel. Stemniak will dump it down the ice. Do we, because it is a double minor, do we see Sagan, Ben, Nachushkin out here for Lindy Ruff. They'll get their opportunities. What to, as what a coach wants to do is, is keep the consistency uh, going. But on the other hand, you'll probably see the second and third line get a little bit more opportunity on a power play than they normally would. Ari Lettinen will play. You got to watch him. Lettinen with two assists on the season. Picked up an assist against Calgary on October 24th. Picked up an assist last night in Edmonton. Second most active. Point getter amongst goaltenders with 21 assists. Still looking for his first NHL goal, though. And not to rub, you know, salt in a wound, but uh, he has as many points as Sergey Gonchar this year. Calgary not given up. Room Stajan stopped by Kari Letton, and I don't think Letton is going to be fooled or willing. Stajan robbed by Kari Letton, and they score!
Sajan's second of the game, his first shorthanded goal, and the Flames within three. Big push on the penalty kill, and maybe some lethargic power play time by the uh, by the uh, Dallas Stars. A little bit of a stumble right there, and as they go back up around, one big save right there by Kerry Lighton, and it's still sitting there loose. And Matt stage and stayed right with it. One good save there. This is the best one right there on the glove. It's sitting right underneath the glove and the pad. And Matt stage and stayed right with it, poked it through. And for stage and it's his third of the season, second of the night. Matt stage and not going to be denied in that Ladies opportunity. And Calgary now get it back. Stepniak trying to roll up to the front of the net. You're going to read the box score somewhere, you know, in a different province or a different hockey city. You're going to say, well, maybe garbage points. But again, big picture, Charlie, when you're trying to develop a team, and boy, did Jamie Benn just roll over TJ Galliardi. As Galliardi shot stopped by Kari Lettman, but again, Flames pushing. Now Kari Lettman a little unhappy with Matt Stajan. Well, a little bit of an extra shot by Matt Stajan is showing some emotion. Tony oh. Ben, just a big man, hit right there. Get that shoulder down, Stajan. I should say Galliardi got up and at it. Now thanks to David Jones, fourth of the year, Alicia Barker Gilmore of Canmore swiped a free club card and on behalf of Safeway and Nabob Coffee has won a men's below the Marine Star photograph watch. 113 remaining in the double minor to spend Bart Perci. And the Flames with a shorthanded goal. Are within three. Shots are 27-25 in favor of Dallas. But the Flames with 13 here in period number three. And a timeout's been called by the Stars. Matt Stajan's unassisted goal gives us yet another winner. Evelyn Mejia of Medicine Hat entered score and win and has won a DVD prize pack from E1 courtesy of Safeway and Nabob Coffee. Congratulations to you, Evelyn. Flames have a couple of centurions in their midst. They're not here yet, but they may be down the road. Both Johnny Goodrow and Billy Arnold of the Boston College Eagles, the Golden Eagles, have hit the 100-point plateau in the NCAA. Now, Johnny did it in 87 games. Billy, who's playing as a senior in 127 games, they've done that in the last week. These two kids are prospects down the road as maybe as early as next season. Here's Jordy Bent for Dallas, who had very little to show for their first two power plays of this game. This gun chart will play it in. Harry Ramos stops it. Coming back is Ladislav Schmid. Tapped out. Backlund has Chris Butler joining him. Michael Backlund shoots and Kari Lettman gets the blocker on that. Teams have to be careful. Or maybe not. Here's Stepniak. Turns the corner. Can't get the shot. It's going to get some help. Plays it to the middle. That one's knocked off by Sean Horkoff. Here's Rich Peverly. Has a step on Weidman. But Dennis Weidman got the stick in the lane. 30 seconds to go in Barchi's double minor. Here's Gonchar. His pass in stopped by Aramo. As Eric Cole came off the bench, got a scoring chance. Short hand of the flame still pushing there, trying to get their fourth goal. As Chris Butler jumps up into the play, and the smart play here is the shot on net. Look for a rebound. And then at the other end, it looks of Gonchar making a nice feed. Over to Peverly and a big save by Kari Ramo. He's wanting to feel good about himself also. Watching Wyvin and Eric Cole, they were having quite a few words on that face-off. Not two guys you would think would get involved in a fight. And nothing has happened. But it's been that kind of game. At least Epniak's going to get involved in a fight. You never know. Here's Cole. Weave his way back out front. Berchi is out there. So the Flames kill off the two Dallas power plays and also score a shorthanded goal. Puck sealed along the wall, but it's kept in. Cole, hooked over by Schmid. Turns. 
gets hit. And the puck comes to the near side after Galliardi, but pinching in is Robodon. Berchi out there after serving his penalty. Gonna come up with the puck. Now the Stars. Get back to the point. Robodon shot. Block. Calgary away. Stajan. Oh, up the middle is Matt Stajan looking for the hat trick tonight. Played off the boards, tipped out by Galliardi. And Ryan Garbutt dumping it in. With two goals tonight, Stajan is the first flame not na named Mike Camilleri to score a pair of goals in a game this year. Camilleri with two two-goal games so far in the season, and now Stajan with a two-goal game. Big time push here by the Flames, uh, and Bob Hartley and the coaching staff will be wondering, okay, where was this push at 7.05 tonight? And they talked about that. Yeah, penalty coming up to Calgary, so Dallas will go back to the power play. Up by three, it's Tellus Flames hockey. The Road to Rio, presented by CIBC, is finalizing World Cup soccer participants. And the qualifying continues tomorrow, 12 p.m. Mountain, on Sportsnet 360. With live matches at 12.30 on Sportsnet West, Pacific, East, and Ontario. Ukraine, France, Croatia, England, Iceland, and Chile are involved tomorrow afternoon. Dennis Weidman in the penalty box. Garbutt with a little shot in the back of the leg. Right there, upset Weidman. There's a little shot. Hey, how about a little extra one right to the jaw? That's a down by three kind of penalty right there. Ryan Garbutt with a goal in this game. Probably most notable this year for a suspension after a hit against Dustin Penner earlier this year. Here's Jordy Penn to brother Jamie. Looking back to Jordy. What a game Jamie Benn has had tonight. Two goals, or pardon me, a goal and four assists. A five-point evening. That is a career best. Gonchar, hard shot off the glass. Then with his second career hat trick. Sagan is out there. To answer your question about the uh, Sagan line on the power play, they're back out there now. It's getting too close. But I don't think they weren't out there for the four-minute, were they? No. Sagan now scores! Four goals for Tyler Sagan. And that is just a little icing on the cake. You have games like this way too seldom if you're a goal scorer. Pucks are dropping right where you're supposed to be. They're getting the second and third opportunities. Nice little feed wide open. Top shelf. And you just enjoy nights like this if you're a goal scorer because they don't happen often enough everything's working your way you take advantage of it and you run with it well and we're watching a game for the ages from jamie ben his fifth assist in this game four goals for taylor sagan and it's a power play marker as the puck knocked down by michael backwood He'll shoot it in. Kari Lattinen with it. Jackman going to the net. What is somewhat interesting is in the American Hockey League, these two teams' organizations played last night. It was 7-3 for Abbotsford over Texas. 7-3 here, Dallas leading Calgary. Game review brought to you by Intact Insurance. Your home, your auto, your business. Ask your broker about Intact Insurance Company. Hats off for Mr. Tyler Sagan. Second career hat trick. In fact, he's got four goals. Career night for Jamie Benn. Six point night. One goal, five assists. And Matt Stajan picks up two goals himself. Not to be upstaged. One including a short hander. Shane O'Brien down low to Hoodler. Back up to Schmid. O'Brien comes over. Can't handle it off the boards. And it's played out to center. Fiddler picks it up. He'll dump it in. Peverly back to get it. Monahan looking for Berchi. Monahan will get it out. Did you ever have a six-point game? It was six. That was the four-goal night in the island. We talked about a few games ago. They threw in a couple of assists, at least one. Sure. Because I must have missed one shot. Yeah. Had to be rebound yeah. someplace. Some. Yeah, absolutely. Close to the corner. I don't, that was a four-goal night, and again, I felt the same way. I think uh, saying everything was working that night, and you, you take advantage of it and you enjoy it. 
It just doesn't happen a lot anymore, though, does it? I mean, hat trick's okay, but four or five goal games or like we're seeing tonight from Jamie Benn, a six-point game. That, those are rarities these days. It's such a, a focus on defensive-style hockey everywhere. A defensive systems makes it very difficult. Chris Russell not quitting his shot from the sideboards, turned away by Kari Lettinen. Here's the rookie, Nachushkin. Last year, KHL Rookie of the Year, had a penalty shot at Edmonton last night, stopped by Devin Dubnik. But he has a pair of assists in this game. Eric Cole's shot. And that one hits Russell. He's down. Russell blocking a shot. 7-3 game with two minutes to go. It shows you a little commitment there. Colburn dumping it in. Stood up by Gonchar. Back to get it. Brendan Dillon. It'll be very interesting to see how the Flames respond. They have a day off for the practice tomorrow. Then they host the Oilers here Saturday night. A lot went right for Calgary in this game. Across the line, Garbutt with a goal shot. Ramo with the save. And a faceoff coming up in the offensive end. Tough, tough night if you're a player, especially after the, the way the, the Flames have played most of the season. And when you get behind like this, and again, it started early. They gave up that first period goal. They gave up a bunch of goals in the second. It, it's very difficult. And it wasn't until the third period tonight where we saw some some emotion, some some players just not happy with the way they're playing, uh, getting a little bit more aggressive. And that's how you, as coaching staff players, how do you figure out how to get these guys started right from the drop of the puck? Galliardi's pass. Jones has to go off the glass. And regardless of what the expectations from the outside were, Charlie, you know, maybe there were going to be nights like this, there can't be acceptance, can there? Well, from a you, team. you can't uh, accept it. You can't be happy with it. And uh, notes are being taken to see who's going to get the majority of the ice There's time with the lineup. The coming on Saturday on the Battle of Alberta, the first of the year. Puck brought in offside. Bob Hartley, not afraid to bring up players. As I mentioned, Abbotsford was in Texas last night. They won 7 3. And Blair Jones, who we've seen in the Calgary lineup before with a hat trick and two assists. Been nothing but goals when these two organizations have played. Texas beat Abbotsford earlier in the season 9-3. Last night, Abbotsford over Texas 7-3. And Calgary losing October 24th in Dallas by a 5-1 score. So it's been kind of that old-time 80s hockey when these two organizations have gotten together. TJ Galliardi's been given an assist on Matt Stajan's second goal, the shorthanded goal. In the late stages of this one, a couple of days off for the Dallas Stars as they head to Vancouver to take on the Canucks coming up on Sunday. Calgary just a game against Edmonton and out on the road for one against Winnipeg before they come home for games against Columbus and Florida next week. Kari Ramo gets that one, knocks it down, and a late face-off in the Calgary end. Just trying to get through this game, 12.3 seconds to go. Shots favoring Dallas, 32 to 28. So there's been a big push again in that third period. But it's easy to say and it's easy to do when you're, you're trailing by five or six. You have to do that when it's a lot tighter. Show that emotion, get, get upset out there and, and have the intensity that the Flames have carried through most of this season. So it's, it's a bump in the road, regroup, get ready for Saturday. This was one for the ages tonight when it comes to the captain of the Dallas Stars as Jamie Benn, one goal and five assists, a career best. As this one ends with a little bumping and pushing as Stefan Robida, who started it on the first shift, ends it on the last shift for Dallas. A lot of chirping going on on the ice, and when you're Dallas, you can certainly enjoy it. It's a lot more fun chirping when you're winning the game 7-3 than it is when you're backing up uh, as the Calgary Flames uh, are right now. So a quick regroup. Dallas gets a couple days off before they play in Vancouver. The Flames definitely will be on the ice tomorrow morning. A lot of uh, video work will be taking place and a lot of preparation. The game's over. You lost the points. Now you work on trying to gain the two points on Saturday against Edmonton. Dallas Stars have now won five in a row on the road while the Calgary Flames are winless in their last five. 7-3 Dallas over 